day two of 5.7 deals with the division of complex numbers. Now remember that an imaginary number i, as uh, we can see it uh, in its form sometimes, like a bi, really is a square root of negative 1. So there is a hidden square root in every imaginary number when you see that i. Uh, but let's just get some practice finding complex conjugates. Uh, they'll always have the form a plus bi and a minus bi. So let's say that I gave you 3 plus 2i. The complex conjugate would be 3 minus 2i. Again, something I want to make sure is crystal clear is con conjugates always look exactly the same with one huge difference. The sign in between the numbers changes. Uh, if you have a plus in between your terms, when you write the conjugate, there would be a subtraction. Uh, this is even true if your first number is a negative. Let's say I give you negative 5 plus 7i. The complex conjugate would be negative 5 minus 7i. Uh, the negative 5, you don't change to a positive 5. Rather, you're looking at the sign in between those two terms. That's what you're going to change. Uh, very similarly, if we start with a subtraction like 8 minus an i, the complex conjugate would be 8 plus an i. Now, what we saw much earlier in this unit was that conjugates have a very special relationship uh, to each other. When we were factoring uh, you know, the expression a squared minus b squared, we saw that that would factor into a plus b times a minus b. And uh, a plus b and a minus b are conjugates, of course. They will multiply to a difference of squares. This is very handy because squaring gets rid of square roots. Now remember how I even began to describe this lesson. When you see an i, i is the square root of negative 1. So when we square, we're going to be getting rid of those square roots. And uh, that's why it's so important to take a look at problem number one right here. Problem number one, we're asked to divide. But the real problem is that in the denominator that we see here, we have a radical. We have a square root of negative one that is hidden, represented as an i. And we saw earlier in this unit, we cannot have square roots in our denominator. So the way we're going to uh, deal with this is we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of 1 minus 2i. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus 2i. And now we're going to go back to our last lesson, day 1 of 5.7. And we're going to recall that we could multiply. 3 times a 1 is 3. We're just foiling here. 3 times a 2i would be a 6i. 2i times 1 would be another 2i here. 2i times 2i is a 4i squared. Down below, we could multiply as well. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times the 2i would be a 2i. Uh, negative 2i times 1 would be a minus 2i. Negative 2i times a plus 2i would be a negative 4i squared. So again, this is just coming from uh, the foiling. But remember that i squared is equal to negative 1. If we remember that, we're going to have to come up to these expressions and say, do you know what, these i squareds, we're going to convert to negative 1. And in so doing, what you'll have then is 3 plus 6i plus 2i plus 4 times negative 1. Down below we've got 1 plus 2i minus a 2i minus 4 times negative 1. And of course multiplying the negative 1 to these numbers, we'd have 3 plus 6i plus 2i plus a negative 4. Down below, negative 4 times negative 1, that last part, just being crystal clear with all of this, where all of this is coming from, 
negative 4 times negative 1 would be a plus 4. Let's combine our like terms. A 3 and a negative 4 adds up to a negative 1. A 6i and a 2i will add up to an 8i. Down below, 1 and 4 add up to a 5. And notice the 2i and the minus 2i cancel out. This is always going to happen down below in our denominator because we're multiplying conjugates. I'd like to separate these two, though. This is a combined fraction, a unified fraction. If we separate them, we can see there is a real number and an imaginary number added together. It's also going to help us as we simplify in the future. Well, let's come back up here and multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate down below. That will be 1 plus i. Notice we're always going to begin this way. Then we simply will FOIL or distribute. 2 times 1 is a 2. 2 times an i would be a 2i. i times 1 is an i. i times i is i squared. Down below, 1 times 1 is a 1. 1 times an i is an i. Negative i times 1 is negative i. Negative i times itself is negative i squared. But of course, as we were saying before, wherever we see i squared, we're going to say, wait a minute, we can't have that. We have to replace i squared with negative 1. In so doing, we will have a much easier looking problem. And by the way, look at that denominator. You could start combining some steps. Look, the minus the negative 1, minus a negative always becomes plus a positive. This can speed things up for us a little bit. Up on top, a 2 and a negative 1 add up to a 1. A 2i and a 1i add up to a 3i. Down below, we have a 1 and a positive 1. That would add up to a 2. But the i and the negative i completely cancel out, leaving us with 1 plus 3i over 2. However, it's best to separate this into a real number and the imaginary number. And again, we can then see that we could reduce if that were the case. Here it's not. For example, 3, last one, once again, same process. We're going to multiply the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. We're always doing that. And then we will distribute and FOIL. 6 times 4 is 24. Here we get a 6i. i times 4 is a 4i. i times i will be, again, i squared. Down below, 4 times 4 is 16. Then we'd have a plus 4i. This would be a minus 4i. Then we'll have a minus, well, i times i for our last part. That's the last from the FOIL acronym. i squared once again. But here it is once again for all of these problems, every single one of them. We're going to see some i squareds. And what that means really is change i squared to what it really is, and that's a negative 1. You're going to see this happen quite frequently down below. You'll see a minus square of uh, minus a negative 1, as you can see. Well, at this point, minus a negative 1 is going to turn into plus a positive. And we're doing that so that we very quickly could combine our like terms. 24 plus negative 1 is going to be 23. Uh, 6i and a 4i would add up to a 10i. Down below, 16 and 1 add up to a 17. But here we go again. That 4i and negative 4i will cancel. So what are we left with? 23 over 17 plus 10i all over 17. And now with 
Part 1 of 5.7, we have added, subtracted, multiplied, and now finally divided complex numbers. Hope things are going well. Best of luck to you.